the last meeting? Read the accurate record. Right, we'll move on to item agenda four, Treasury Management, and ask Mr. Edge to um, help us with this, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, the report in front of you is really just an update of the authority and treasury management policies we've got now. These were really inherited from the uh, Business High and Security Transport Authority. Um, it's a really key source of funds for the authority in helping to put the levy down. Approximately £1.4 million is in a year from investment service funds on the money market. Uh, and to help us do that, we use the firm called Capita, it used to be called Sector. Um, they sort of help not just us, but quite a few other local authorities in this. And, and they provide specialist financial advice on the credit worthiness of organisations. So it enables us to put forward a, a policy that has three main aims. The first aim is security of the funds. And the other aim is to keep the funds liquid enough so that we can meet our liabilities when we need to. But also, the third aim is the return on the investments. Um, the report basically has three appendices attached to them. The first appendix just basically lists the procedures we have in place for when we, we invest money. The second appendix is a snapshot of in December just to analyse who we invest with, the term of those deals, and the interest rate end on those deals. And the third appendix is something provided by sector, which is a benchmarking exercise. It looks at how the authorities, uh, treasury management, is in compared to a basket of other authorities. We didn't choose any of those authorities, they were chosen by sector, but they said seemed similar in size to what we do. And the report details who we, we invest with, how long we can invest for, and usually it's no more than 364 days, uh, but it can be any period uh, up to that. It also gives current limits that we have with these uh, institutions. We brought something today that looks at increasing those limits because we realised from the 1st of April the, the authority starts receiving growth fund monies. Um, we've looked at increasing some of the limits from, as you can see, 3.5 from 60 million to 70 million per organisation. Um, the policy, as it says, is really to minimise risk. We, we can't completely get rid of risk, but by having sector help us, we think we can mitigate risk in such a degree that we can feel confident and lend the monies to these organisations. Um, the rest of the report tells you why we do it, and uh, how we manage our interests, and, and also looks towards borrowing, which we haven't really done any borrowing for quite some time now, because the Department of Transport used to give us borrowing approval, but now it just gives us grants to fund capital schemes. But there will be a requirement to probably go out to the market and do some borrowing, should we ever go ahead and um, that's all I was going to say on the report. I'm just taking any questions. Thank you. Well, got any questions? Liam? Yeah, thanks very much. It's a very useful report. Um, it's just purely this kind of request for further information. Within the report, it details um, financial ratings and the work of the ratings agencies with regards to where we borrow money from and where is a, kind of a good investment, where is it. Um, for those of us from a non-financial or accountancy background, it might be quite useful to have some kind of information about how financial ratings work, just so we can understand that a bit more definitely. Um, do you want me to bring that back to further report, or do you want me to just give you a brief outline now of all the issues? I'll a brief outline. It's very brief, but it's very complicated to me. Um, and then a little bit of a briefing there might help as well, sure. then, Dave. And um, basically, SACTA use rating agencies, Moody's and Fitch, and it takes rates from them. They're two independent organisations that look at the credit worthiness of organisations, basically using a whole series of different criteria. So what I'll do in the future is I'll bring the paper to explain that in further detail, that's okay. That's fine. Are you okay with that? Any other questions? Can we move on to item Yeah, it's just been a uh, multi-point now in the United Kingdom. Um, consequently, the transparency has been set. 
set out in the next section the, the key risks that, that, that affect the audit. The first of those is not one for you to be alarmed about in any way. It's the management of of control. And that every audit that is carried out pretty much throughout the country uh, will require by auditing standards to make a basic assumption that management are able to manipulate, manipulate the accounts if they want to. So uh, every audit that's carried out will have that risk within it basically it's a standard set of procedures that we carry out to mitigate that risk. Other areas that we're focusing on are um, the consolidation of the accounts, the accounts of Liverpool City Region will have the accounts of Merseyside PTE consolidated into them so basically you will have all of the information relating to Mersey travel in one set of accounts and that's pretty much the same as last year looking forward obviously as the City Region responsibilities expand then more information will come into the account, but they'll be looking in 14, 15 in relation to that. So we're going to look in detail at consolidation of the accounts, and we're also expanding one of our areas of focus, looking at the tunnels and so on. As far as funding for money is concerned, under the code, we're required to talk in three areas. We're required to look at your annual governance statement and make sure that's consistent with our knowledge and expectations. We're required to bring reports of other regulators, if, if indeed there are any, which is uh, quite rare really. And finally, we're required to carry out any other work that we consider necessary and the work that we will be looking at in relation to that is to follow up from previous recommendations of the PTE, the ITA, and mainly in relation to peer review. So um, that's essentially uh, a very quick overview of the audit plan. Uh, the fee is unchanged from that of Merseyside ITA last year. Uh, we'll be spending more time on looking at governance and the changes brought about by the creation of the city region, but less time in relation to payroll because all of the employees transferred over to the BTE. So uh, that's it, really. Very happy to take any questions that anybody might like to ask. Thank you. Question, Ian? Yeah, just a, a brief regards to timeliness of publishing. I appreciate we only formally received this on Friday, but most of, only, most, most of us as members only actually got to see it yesterday morning. Uh -huh. So we've got 24 hours to, to read it. Um, it's just a bugbear of mine about making sure that as we have to done, produce papers five working days in advance of the committee, can we make sure that your work dovetails with that? And I'll be very specific. In a previous life, I used to chair the audit committee of the City Council and the Audit Commission, as was, was very good at publishing all its papers literally 48, 24 hours before the committee. And if you've got to digest and go through in detail to do your role properly, which we, we do do, you need to have a bit of time to actually make sure we can factor that in. So if we can just request that we get these things in time to be published with all the papers, that would be really useful for us. That's fine, yeah, in the future, we'll be very happy to do that. A light addition to the agenda, and we thought it would be better to see it in the year rather than something that's happening. Yeah, yes, in the future, we're happy to agree a program and make sure the whole papers are all that in time. Any more questions? We'll move to the recommendation then. Um, and the recommendation is that um, the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority Audit Committee is recommended to approve the proposed external audit plan for 2014 15. Are we in agreement? 